Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our double header of Nexus Gaming Series action tonight. Starting off with Division C West, Guys Gems versus Massive Whiff, and our last minute co-caster extraordinaire, my teammate joining me, Larson. How you doing today, oh, bud? Good, good, good. Just uh, joining you for the first time. We'll see how it goes. Should be a little a nervous, time. but should be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. We'll watch some games, enjoy some hots. Uh, actually, two pretty big games today, too, so you really picked the right night. And cool. we are not going to waste any time as we already have both teams in lobby getting ready to go here. Division C West. Let me see if these teams are uh, ready. West Coast, what, what? Represent. That's right. <laughs> So match one, Cursed Hollow. Uh, what are your what are your thoughts when you think of Cursed Hollow going into an amateur competitive? Well, what kinds of things do you think of? Uh, I am always privy to wave clear, so you can keep the lanes pushed out. It allows you to manipulate uh, lanes and get to curses faster. It's also good to get a good murker as well, so you can get to the mercs earlier and get those pushing as well. Yeah. Um, but Team fight's always good too as you're fighting over those objectives. It's always good to have a good team fight as well. Cursed Hollow, definitely an oldie but a goodie. One of the first maps in the game, and I still think um, one of the best uh, as well. I agreed. I completely agreed. It's the most MOBA esque, I would say, of all the maps that we really have. Yeah, the most traditional MOBA esque. Mm -hmm. and, and still holds up even with all the new fancy fangled maps yeah absolutely all they right do. both teams have mm -hmm. ard so i am clicking start let's do it so welcome to cursed hollow oh you know what i need to do a sound check matt say something again hello hello perfect all right you're now? coming in loud and clear Sweet. if there is anybody in the chat uh sound is always the number one issue i have please let me know about the sound volume I love you guys, so give me a holler if something doesn't sound quite right. So this uh, map was the choice for Guy's Gems, which means Massive Whiff is going to get first pick, first ban. What are the meta bans right now? What do you think we're going to see some of those heroes? Uh, Maiev's usually a good ban right now just because she can be difficult to deal with. Uh, Phoenix is always a decent ban just because it pumps out so much damage, especially uh, once you get kind of into late game. Uh, Diablo is kind of the big meta ban right now as well, but usually you see him more in the second round if nobody picks him up as well. Yeah, I really, really like Diablo on Cursed Hollow. There are so many tight corridors and spaces mm -hmm. where you can just body slam those guys under the wall, get that stun out. Uh, but they're going to go with Tahaka, banning out the solo yeah. lane global. Um, yeah. He's not quite as common as he used to be, but he's still solid and almost and an insta-ban on our current number one support, Stukov. And Stukov's got that silent zone that just pretty much cancels everything out in those choke points. So that's that's a good ban to take out as well. And we are flying here. First wow. pick, Sonya. These guys know what they want. Whiff. Yeah, man, they know exactly what they want. And then the immediate Tracer Mouth kind of a, uh, early NGC really good... duo action there. Yeah, yeah, very good. You got the Tracer that can dive once you put a hot on him, and, and Moonfire's just keeping him alive and keeps him trucking moving forward. So that's a great combo. Yeah, it was the uh, it was the real hotness early in the uh, HGC season. Not quite as common, but still solid. I think those two picks are going to slow this uh, draft down a little bit mm -hmm. um, as they consider how to deal with the uh, mouth tracer. Tracer, you want those taunts. Garage, yep, I was say, Varian. Mm -hmm. Those yep, are the picks absolutely. if you want to lock down that tracer. Absolutely, I would agree with that 100 percent. Get the taunts down to lock her down and anything you follow up with the spear or any other stuns and lock her down for a half second more and she's usually pretty dead so gray main can be really good to lock down blow up genji's good as well etc's great follow up to lock her down so they respond with one overly mobile hero uh to their other with a genjo and etc just man he's always like the uh the standard bearer of tanks always good never bad my mic is a little quiet rusty thank you very much i will try to accommodate for that 
Yeah, ETC is always solid. Uh, he's got great peels for uh, front line, uh, getting into the back line, right? He's also got uh, great initiation. You can also, you know, poke somebody out and get them uh, drawn out from their team. You know, displaced. That's the word I was looking for. The number one thing I like about ETC more than anything, you don't hear it a lot, is I think he is one of the easiest tanks to peel with. Uh, yes. Because face melt's so good. Um, mm -hmm. especially if you take the extended range at four. Uh, it's a, mm -hmm. an under under um, appreciated aspect of his kit, just how good he is at peeling. Sure, absolutely. When do you when do you get the talent for move speed? Is that at, at four as well? Um, I think that was the one that I, I raged at myself for accidentally picking, and I believe it mm -hmm. is at four, because okay. at four, the only talent, me personally, I ever take on ETC is the extended W, because it's so good. That's so funny, good. When I play him, I typically go the move speed, but I, I would probably say I'm a, maybe I'm a bit more aggressive with him. And I know you play him a whole lot more than I do anymore. But So Guy's Gems coming out with that Li Ming ban. Um, whenever you, not that that's a bad ban, but it's not quite, I don't know, meta right now. You know, I always wonder, is that like a targeted ban? Did they do their homework? Because um, I know we do our homework, and I know other teams do as well. So is that and a targeted ban? And there's the Diablo ban. Yeah, and that's the second round I was talking about. We typically see if nobody picks it up early, we usually see it in the second round. And uh, leaving with Calamity can be a little bit of a soft counter on the tra on the Tracer, too, just teleporting on top of him. I wonder if they don't want to deal with that. But yeah. Squish, Squish, Squish from Guy's Gems coming uh, with a Kale Thos there. And clearly this has got to be some kind of frontliner to uh, ram Makes me out. wonder if they may go Garrosh here, because you can get a Chuck with a whole lot of lockdown to kill that's true. Into the back line. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Taunt, excellent on the Genjo as well. Mm hmm. Oh, even on the Sonya, too, if you wait till she starts spinning. and Instead, I'm going to go with the Jojo. Johanna. Yeah, Johanna, always solid, never bad. Um, she's kind of a vanilla in that you never really see her on the highlight reels, you know, but uh, never a bad selection either. Just a good, solid front line. Pretty, uh, pretty survivable in, in most situations with the uh, trait that she's got, as well as the level 20 undying talent that we actually got a lot of use out of. We did. Uh, couple, was it last week that we got? I believe it was, yeah. It? So, yeah, absolutely. She's Good also like a walking mosh pit counter almost single-handedly, so she does really well in ETC. Sure, absolutely, with the uh, Condemn or mm -hmm. the ulti, yeah. So, so last you... two picks, it's, uh, I mean, it's going to be the one support, clearly. Did um, they just go with a Rhaegar, do you think, for some murking pressure and a little bit of wave clear? Because right now they don't have a lot of wave clear. Or you go with the Divine Shielded Genji. Uh, yeah, that's... There you go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you have the Junkrat there for the poke damage to set up the kill, and then you have the Genjo going in and finishing it off. So mm -hmm. nice, well-rounded comp coming out of Massive Whiff. And now it's got to be the Bruiser solo laner here for Guy's Gems. Uh, the one that sticks out to me is Blaze. Made it through the whole draft, still sitting out there. Bunker is incredible. Uh, yeah, he does with... Go, go ahead. Sorry. Zaya, the stun on the Sonya, keeping her off for spin. You can never have too much hard CC uh, when a Sonya is on the other team. Yeah, absolutely. You can also help the Tracer dive a little bit. If you dive the back line and put a bunker down, she can jump in and out as well and get a little bit of armor for survivability. I do like the junk rat pick here uh, as well, because uh, if she the trap build, you can get a lot of zoning in these narrow choke points, which can help in the curses. Yeah, the other thing you get out of bunker too is that uh, you can bunker away the divine shielded uh, Genji. So if he yeah. goes dragon strike and the D shield, that's two ultis for the price of bunker instead mm -hmm. of going to go with artanis what artanis gives you on here assuming you go with amateur opponent is a ton of boss burn yeah absolutely with tracer and uh Kael'thas bombs yeah it gives you some good boss burn i'm curious who they're going for swaps with though they i mean genji's going to be tough to hit uh sonya's going to be in, in your back line in your back line for the most part maybe the junk rat but then he just w's and pops out so Interesting to see them take that. Possibly the blinds for the Genji and Sonya. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe. Uh, either there are definitely not a lot of good uh, swap targets for sure. Um, if he goes the uh, 
purifier beam, that's kind of a an interesting soft counter to mosh, though. That's true. You just put it on put him. Put it on top of him, yeah. And just let it burn him as he sits there. 100%. That's true. Never thought of that, actually. Oh, I I'm, I play a ton of ETC. I'm aware of that thing be beaming down <laughs> on my head. It, it hurts. <laughs> That's funny. Huh. Well, yeah, we definitely have uh, a couple interesting comps going on. Pretty standard um, for yeah, pretty the red side here. What is it? Uh, massive width. Um, pretty squish on the other side for the back line for uh, guys' gems. But be interesting to see what they what they pull out here. So let's introduce our blue team here, Guys Gems. We have Stwish on Artanis, Cody Kraz on Tracer, Oten Odin on Johanna, Spoogles on Kalthos, and White Ghost on Malfurion. And on Massive Whiff, we've got Zanzibar on ETC, Kaina on Sonya, Zane KT on Genji, Ruben Ripper on the Uther and Cash Crap. I like the mount synergy we got over here too, all the Zergians. Fantastic. Yeah, I was I was gonna comment they definitely get uh, like an extra level for the mount synergy here coming out of massive and colors whip. too. They're all red or orangish. Although I, I am going to deduct that one point because Ruben River has the most awesome Discord and NGS name of David Schwimmer, and I wanted to see <laughs> that name on the screen here playing a game, oh, but instead we've got Ruben Ripper. So here we see we got some uh, lanes. Everyone's headed to lanes. We got Artanis headed down, Sonya headed down to match. Not losing any soak at all. Yeah, the, the Sonya Artanis I think will s probably slowly favor that Sonya, and Artanis not going to get crushed or anything. Uh, once amateur opponents picked up, that'll help a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the shields actually provide quite a bit of sustain for Artanis as well. So he'll he'll hold his own for sure. Uh, mana might, mana issue will probably be the biggest effect. Right. Genjo it's coming there. in there for the gank really burns down Artanis, but obviously taps still up so early in the game. Something to consider, though, on the flip side, Junkrat will handle 1v1 in this lane. Anybody, guys, gems can send up here. So that's something they got to account for for sure. Yeah, it's interesting that they have the mouth up top on his own. That's not something I yeah, you probably want, absolutely. We got yeah, I'm day. not sure who the alternative is. <clears throat> Maybe the Kael'thas. Some interesting here. An invade by ETC and Genjo, countered by Kael'thas. Genji, and Genji with the block on the pulse bomb. Impressive. When this is getting interesting real fast, everyone coming to the party. Looks like nobody actually died. Oh, there we go. But Artanis Ooh. in the bottom lane picks off a Sonya. That is not okay. something you see too often, Sonya dying in the solo lane. Yeah, might have to go back and look at that later. Hey, Cowboy Kyle, our good buddy in the chat room there. How's it going, my friend? So the uh, first tribute, you get the 30-second warning at 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so it'll actually pop at 3 minutes. Okay. S very slight soak advantage for massive whiff right now. Just, well, actually, now it's dead even, so ignore everything I just said. Level's completely even, both sides making sure not to miss any soak. Yeah, it's interesting that they didn't get much of a soak advantage after that uh, kill at the bottom lane by Artanis. That's true, yep. So either Artanis didn't push real quick or Genji came down to soak a little bit. But either way, not much lost. So decision time for Massive Whiff. Do they send somebody to the top to deal with the Giants pushing? Or do they send the full team down to the uh, Tribute here? Um, massive Whiff did also capture their Giants. But, you know, in the bottom lane, not going to get nearly as much value. So it looks like Junkrat is staying top. All five members of Guy's Gems here. While Massive Whiff will have four Guy's Gems easily securing that tribute with the numbers advantage. So uh, that was the real dividends for uh, warding off that giant invade. And I think that that was uh, a good call by them because they just got, what, about a half a level lead off of that as well? Yeah, uh, they were able to clear up. out the giants and get a, a mini XP advantage. I think that actually was the right call for both squads, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There wasn't really a whole lot to capitalize on for our blue squad, the guys' gems. So to go down and get it, I think that was good. Get the uh, get the lead on the curses. 
to now start. something we didn't talk about as second tribute spawning on the most easily defendable position for guys gems and it doesn't even look like massive whiff the way their posturing is on the map they're not even coming down here so while guys gems gets this freebie I uh, always try to talk a little bit about the teams going in guys gems division C West is six wins one draw no losses sitting in first place as Sonya oversteps a little there gets caught out and Mass that's all the lockdown that, that we were talking about earlier that kind of locked him in place long enough to get all that damage in. And e uh, even more than that, you know, that was just um, a rough place for Sonya to be solo there. That's uh, yeah, not absolutely. where you want to get caught out. Absolutely. Massive whiff, on the other hand, four wins, one draw, one loss in second place. Division C West, first place versus second place in oh, this cool. matchup here. Guys Gems has only lost one map so far wow. this season. Very good. Should be a good match. I agree. Looking forward to it. You know, I'm really impressed with some of the mechanical we sk skill we've seen with some of the dives from the Genjis and the Tracers that people have been able to, to deal with that pressure pretty well. And, you know, when I was casting Chair League and also here in NGS, I always um, kind of focused more on casting the lower divisions for a number of reasons. Um, I'll tell you what I'm most impressed with is both of these teams' macro and decision-making. Typically, from what I've seen at the lower divisions, that's what's lacking more than anything else. Merc mm -hmm. camp timing, those, things of those nature. Both of these teams have really been on it. You can that's see cool. on the map here, massive show, or a massive whiff. They know that uh, boss is going out on the other side, so both teams going to trade out. Artanis is being really aggressive here. I don't see how he get well that if that no, concussion mine sent him the other way, but he is just trying to stall this out and buy time, and now Switch decides he's done his job and I am out of here. I think that's a good call. I'm surprised they didn't just turn and kill him and then burn the boss afterwards. But he gets out scot free. He's gonna go over and get a merc camp for his duties, and we'll see what. Uh, it looks like they're gonna push bottom lane. Yeah, I was the boss a little bit. I was just gonna comment on that. So far, guys, gems completely ignoring top boss, letting Junkrat AFK push with it, while they sh two man push in the bottom. ETC coming down here to defend, but he's not gonna get a lot done. ETC is not exactly the uh, boss defender extraordinaire there. No, that'll probably get the well here, and not much else as far as for it. There. Yeah, six care minute, of that. Bo six minutes, boss. Not terribly powerful. Both sides also secured their giants so I mean other than the two kills not a whole lot separating these teams they're both on the merc timing uh, XP is a slight advantage for massive whiff in fact they have secured their tens and as has guys gem so both sides secured We'll go over those in a moment. A one-man mosh pit gets out KT. Nice play by Zanzibar on the ETC. Riptire follow-up, and I think Guys Gems is going to back up and give this out with five to four. Uh, and this tribute not securing a curse. There's n really no reason to contest this. Yeah, I don't think they need to be contesting this at all. I think they're better off just uh, backing off, barely clearing bottom. Oh, they, they get a pick off somebody. They tried, but the. Uh, Blind from the Artanis was just a hair late. Uh, nothing much lost there. We're at 2-2 two, two curses now. So next curse is going to be a, uh, oh, probably a li bit of a level lead for either team here. Because they're pretty even. You know, the uh, probably the most significant thing that happened there, Uther used Divine Shield right at the back end of that. I don't think that's going to be ready to go for this next tribute. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we also have Artanis Blind should be. We, uh, Johanna also used Blessed Shield there as well. So. Yeah, that that one will be up though. So let's go over these. We have Divine Shield, Rip Tire. Oh, Artanis gets picked off by the Junkrat somewhere. Kind of skirmishing all over the place. My observing skills are not up to snuff. Johanna needs to leave this uh, Bruiser camp and go up to the tribute. This next tribute is Curse. If they try to finish this, they're going to be late. Divine yeah, Shield. I agree. Yeah, Divine Shield for Uther, Rip Tire for Junkrat, Wrath of the Berserker. For Sonya, an X Strike, not the Dragon uh, Dragon Blade, out of Genji. Uh, we already saw Mosh Pit out of ETC. Suppression Pulse from Artanis. Quantum Spike from Tracer. Phoenix from Kael'thas. Twilight Dream from Mouth. And Blessed Shield from Johanna. This time, the blind's on time. There we go. This is a 5 on 4 right now. Artanis is a little bit late, but he is just now getting here. However, that was a three man Twilight Dream and put Sonya and Genji in a world of hurt. 
back out. Uh, try not to die here. She's trying to get a little bit of heals from mouth, getting poked back up. So Great. guys, guys, gems right now, they are just bullying. Um, massive whiff out, however, Tracer in trouble. The poison will kill her if she doesn't get a heal, and instead, the long-range grenade from Junkrat, and that went from great to not so great. However, the zoning managed to buy just enough time to grab that curse for the side of Guy's Gems. Odin trying, running for his life. Yeah, trying to get another kill. Just about. Uh, looks like he's probably going to get away. But uh, that takes away a lot will. of the. Yeah, yeah going to take away a lot of the pressure that you get from that curse. So luckily, they did have midway pushing with that camp that they got earlier. And, I'll you know, we talked about not getting up there in time, but they were able to secure the curse and uh, and the wave at the same time. Yeah, although the uh, the uh, death on the tracer prevented them from pushing with the curse, the long chase from the side of massive whiff actually prevented them from defending. So that long 15 to 20 seconds, they're actually allowed free push on those lanes. These lanes are pretty far pushed out, uh, yeah, partially absolutely. because of that chase. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was... Trying to secure another kill, I think, would have been good if they could have gotten it earlier, but I think the right call should have been if they weren't going to get it right away is to back off and get those lanes uh, more secured in place. Yeah, 100%. Totally understandable, though, from Massive Wisp. We all get the bloodlust sometimes. Oh, absolutely. I love the bloodlust. <laughs> so, Genjo gets away with less than 50 hit points, as does <laughs> Artanis. I always mention on my cast, whenever we have those one of those heroes barely skirting away. The lowest, the record that I've seen in any of my, I think I had 53 Charlie casts and coming up on about a dozen now here in NGS. We had one hero walk away with two hit points. Oh my goodness. That's impressive. I think the lowest I've ever had is probably around 15. So either way, you're pooping your pants trying to run away from that point. <laughs> yeah, both teams, look at this. The, the timing on both these teams, they are clearly on the same level. This is a really close game. Both teams trading boss once again. Both teams captured mercs at the exact same time. These two teams matching each other step for step. The only yeah, s very small difference is a slight level lead for massive whiff. And, you know, it's interesting because they were the ones that did not get the curse. But because the lanes were so pushed out and they had the kills, they weren't able. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and teams weren't able to soak the lanes the way they needed to. Absolutely. And that gives um, has to give Guy's Gems uh, fans just a little bit of a pause because they got that curse and it did not secure them the XP lead. That is a little bit worrisome. Yeah, And now they've got... Uh, the boss push and the front wall is already down so this is this is going to be some keep pressure with this boss they've got to get up here and clear it quick yeah junk rat the only one showing up see now this is a great situation for guys gems if it was on bottom that would be even better i love this call by massive whiff this is just free structure damage take that mm -hmm. when you can get it great call and they'll be able to rotate up to the objective right on time junk rat however will not so yeah, uh, maybe they're just going to give this because the tribute does not really mean anything for the side of Guy's Gems. Bush party no, here. Ruben Ripper in trouble. D shields himself to get himself out of dodge. That's a big cooldown and a three-man mosh pit. No real damage on the follow-up, but oh, now x -Strike comes down to finish the Malfurion. Health bars dropping all over the place. It was a fantastic mosh pit right there with follow-up from the Genji to get in there and secure that kill. Ironically, though, once again, Guy's Gems loses the team fight but actually gets the tribute for the second time. Um, even though nobody on Massive, Whip, uh, Massive Whiff actually died, their health bars were so low that they had to retreat. Yep, and you know, that's kind of the problem with Uther right now is his sustained healing just isn't there. So at the end of these fights, they're not getting that sustained healing to pop back up and to win the rest of the fight. Yeah, 100%. Um, I am the the X Strike um, heroic selection um, may not have been ideal. I mean, when you have a D shield with the Dragon Strike, usually those things are peanut butter and jelly. You just always want to put them together. But he definitely got value out of X Strike there. Yeah, absolutely, he did. And you know what's interesting is he he did, did was able to burst out the Malfurion uh, and able to take him down. But he could have had more damage on the 
chapters of that fight as well at the end of that. And maybe that could have turned the fight better. So Artanis a little ways away. They're trying to get 16 before they fight for this tribute. A uh, nice job by Junkrat. That concussion grenade split out the spell shield from the rest of the uh, wave there. I don't think I've seen that before. So they are going to contest without 16, or are they going to let them get cursed? Uh, rocking a hard place here for Guy's Gems. Uh, it looks like they're going to give it up. They're, oh, no. I mean, they're Maybe right there. To get there. They're going to get it with trickle XP maybe in time. They will have a little bit of delay for Martinez. ETC caught out just a little bit. I think the Condemn interrupted the initial channel on Sonya. the mosh pit. D-Shield comes out to save Sonya. One man mosh pit, two man, three man mosh pit. They walk into it, but he was just too far away from the damage. And this ends up being a two for one in favor of Guy's Gems with uh, Genjo and ETC going out uh, for a trade with Artanis. So massive whiff just quite can't quite get these team fights in front of these curses. You know, the thing that I'm noticing is is they're not really on the same page. You've got Sonya diving at one point, and then ETC comes in later after Sonya's half dead. They're just not really diving and, and jumping on a target the way they need to with the Genji. They all page and moving forward so they can secure those kills. But being separated out like that, you're just not going to get the sustained, sustained healing that you need with the Uther to be able to stay in these fights for a long period of time and keep people alive. Definitely, and <clears throat> ETC has hit some big-time moshes uh, numbers-wise, like two, three-man moshes, um, but a couple of times the damage hasn't been in position there to take advantage, so they're not really getting full value out of what's a very long cooldown heroic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So this is the big one. One of these teams is going to come out of this with probably a pretty decisive lead. Guys, Gems zoning huge. Ooh, Tracer, Tracer gets a massive jump, able to chunked out, able to recall away. And this is a full-on knockdown, dragged out bar fight. Oh. Tracer, the first to fall. Junk Genjo has Tracer to X strike away. away, escapes with 60 hit points. The D shield to keep him up. Is this finally the point for Massive Whiff? It is not. Uther goes down. Tracer and Junkrat kind of low. Sonya on the re-engage. Uh, I don't think Massive Whiff can stay in here. I think this, uh, unfortunately, is going to be yet another curse and tribute going over to Guy's Gems. You know, Artan in on the back line on the Junkrat and just causing all kinds of havoc. He almost soloed him out there in the back line. That was really impressive. He, I think Junkrat put a... W down was able to bounce away with probably sub 10 health there. I'm not sure about this call. Traditionally, during the curse, you almost always get more value out of five man pushing than you do get out of the boss. Um, ETC checking this by himself. They do discover him. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of decisions these two teams make. Um, yeah, I don't agree with this call at all. You never, never, never want to get the boss during a curse. It's just you're, it, you're wasting all of that XP that you could be getting. Yeah. They Usually you want to get it at the end down. of the curse, the last exactly. 15 seconds or so, not in the beginning. They basically ate up 40 seconds of curse time on that boss. There's the mosh pit onto the tracer, and she's able to recall out at just the last minute. ETC in trouble, slow. but the X-Strike gets the mouth again. ETC is ETC's so close! So oh my gosh, get away! And Kael'thas! Oh, there's Genji! Finally, they get the Kael'thas as well. So two for one in favor of Massive Whiff. Three oh, nice. for one. While that boss was still pushing this whole time in the bot lane, though, D-Shield on the Sonya. I really like that D-Shield. Unfortunately, it's the two tanks. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice spear. That's a great spear. I could yep. turn it. Nice, nice well play done. by Kaina, Kaina on the uh, Sonya there, and now Odin may be in trouble. Those uh, trouble slams, they real, and the bigger thing there is that's huge uh, split timers, split death timers there. Yeah, absolutely. With the, uh, but they traded uh, it for a key. They did. They did. Uh, the boss call ended up working out. But uh, I think they could have gotten a lot more done there if they wouldn't have done that boss. So. They Boss does get bottom keep for massive whiff. However, the team fight ace gets them the early uh, 20 advantage and will net them their own boss as well. If the timing is right on this, they may be dealing guys gems with this boss right as this trip comes up. It's going to be close. 
Yeah, this could work out really, really well for Mastiff's Whiff. If they want to be really sneaky about it, you actually hold this boss here for 15, 20 seconds or so, and you try Until to time boss. it with the trib, yeah. Yep, mm-hmm. I agree. I think that would be the good call. They choose not to, though. Because, you know, after Curse, it takes a little while for that first trib to pop. So you have the team hold it down, and you make guys... Oh, the timing actually ends up being perfect anyway. Um, yeah. it, it was only like a 10-second hold. So now Guys Gems has to decide between do we let the boss free push on our keep, which already has no wall, or do we contest this curse without our level 20? I think you give up the tribute and you get the boss myself, but I don't think either 100%. one of those is a great decision either. Yeah, it's kind of picking your poison. I think I would rather try and, and kill the boss as well. And do, you've got all your lanes pushed out with mercs. You've got catapult going into the bottom lane to, to kind of counteract some of that push. So I think the, the proper call would be to get that boss, but they choose not to. Now ETC finally landed a big time mosh pit within range of the damage. However, Spoogles on Kael'thas immediately interrupted it and got no value. In the middle of that though, Artanis goes down First kill going over to Massive Whiff. Now, the longer this, there you go. Now, yep. Massive Whiff has secured this. This is game. They 100% channel this, go the top lane, and end. Uh, yep. This really should be game, and they are posturing towards it now. Three members much, down. Tracer and. Yeah, that was time. the end of this game um, was played very well by Massive Whiff, and barring some kind of bizarre miracle defense here, this is going to be game. It should be 100% big game. Unfortunate for guys' gems. They had a great lead going in there, but a couple uh, bad team fights kind of lost them the game right at the end, and that's the beauty of this game. You can always have comebacks, right? Yeah, and, and not only that is I really um, don't think they maximize the value out of their second uh, curse. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that as well. That that boss did get him the keep, but that keep they didn't get any value out of getting that keep because they went mid and ended up dying anyways. And then gave up a curse pretty much at the end anyways. So let's uh, take a look. Let's say, I mean, I've got the fancy, fancy thing. You may as well use it. <laughs> Stats here, massive whiff, securing game one and handing guys gems all their only second map loss of the season. So that's pretty big here. I don't know that anything on the stat screen really jumps out at me with the possible exception of 147,000 siege damage by Junkrat. Obviously, we know what his role was that game. Yep, yep. Uh, killing those bosses and killing those waves in the top lane early really helped him jump ahead, for sure. And, you know, the other thing I just noticed, this is fairly surprising, actually, is the healing discrepancy between Uther and Malfurion. Uther, 62k healing, only 39k from Malfurion. Uh, typically, you see that the other way around there. So, really well played by David Schwimmer, a.k.a. Ruben Ripper, to uh, show off the Uther heals. Absolutely. It makes me wonder if uh, Malfurion possibly wasn't hitting his Ws to maximize the hot healing from those yeah. and getting that burst healing up. I think that's that's going to be the uh, if if those guys were to go back and watch that game, that's probably what they would say. He's not getting a hundred percent value out of the uh, is it Moonburn? Is that the talent? Mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, Moonfire. The maybe. Moonfire. There you go. The W. So game two, gonna get this lobby going. Will be on Infernal Shrines. Also one of the more traditional, standard, more straightforward competitive maps you see all the time it's an excellent well-balanced map love games on shrines yep absolutely sonia again is really good there uh possibly could we see a kerrigan there she's always that's pretty much the only map that you can take a kerrigan on these days yeah kerrigan and maybe the occasional once in a blue moon tomb but yeah it's usually when she pops up you're going to see her on infernal shrines yeah, uh, Genji can be pretty, or not, sorry, not Genji. Uh, Hanzo can be pretty good there if you go the Q build with the explosions. You can clear out those waves pretty quick as well. As well as W build is always good. So many things to bounce around. All right. So team's filling up the lobby now. So we have been on the receiving end of those where you have a game. Actually, we had it just this week, Matt. You have a game. You feel like you're winning throughout. You just can't close it out. Other team makes the really nice plays, and you end up losing that game that you were feeling so good about. 
What are you saying in the comms if you are guys jams here? Well, I think it's just relax. I think you, I think you uh, you know what you did wrong in that in that case, um, where you know you took the team fight in the middle when you probably shouldn't have. You should have used the the curse to push a little bit in a lane um, instead of wasting it on the boss. I think you just just kind of wipe the slate clean and you come come at this next game just refocused and uh, clear mind. Yeah, absolutely. You know that's one of those things you you, you obviously you never like to lose, but you're kind of saying, look, guys, we had that one. We can hang with these guys. We can 100% win it. One thing goes different, and this game is different. So let's just let's put it together now. And these yeah. teams, I mean, are clearly very closely matched. That whole game, yeah, um, they were really matching each other, blow for blow, punch for punch. Even though Guys Gems, I would say, was uh, slightly ahead through the first probably two thirds of that game, neither team ever really took command of it until the very last curse that actually ended the game yeah absolutely i would agree with that 100 percent. structures were, were pretty much similar until uh the end of the game as well so that keep went down in that second curse for guys gems but uh is, do you think there's any glaring bands that you would ban from either side some so any any uh respect bands that you would see come through you know that's a good question and i always like to talk in my cast about um the differences, even uh, when you do your homework on these teams, the differences in the drafts you get from game one to game two, because you can do your homework, you can see that guy's a level 70, you know, Kael'thas or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and maybe you target ban in that way. But traditionally, game one, um, unless you know the team previously, tends to be meta bans and map bans. And then game two, that's when you start getting those targeted bans. Instant Stukov ban, that's 100% a meta ban. Uh, that sounds like from, your kind of ban right there. Yeah, right? guys, gems there. <laughs> um, the the one that jumps to my head was the ETC. Um, if those mosh pits during the middle of the game were within uh, the range of the damage, they would have all been absolutely crushing. So a yeah. small adjustment out of that ETC player would have been a huge. Um, so that's the only one that really comes to mind is um, uh, maybe that ETC had some really nice mosh pits and I mean, you can make the argument Mosh Pit the most influential ulti in the game, the most like game changing, completely momentum changing ultimate yep. in the game. Um, yep. I think you can make that argument. Uh, I I would actually 100% agree with that. It it just allows you to completely change a team fight going the wrong way. I mean, even if you're low and your your ETC hits a massive Mosh Pit, you can jump in and kill somebody or you know two or three people while they're just standing there dancing. Yeah, and it's, you know, uh, it's awesome. You see it in HGC games. Dahaka banned out by massive whiff. They apparently do not want to play against Dahakas. And this time, Guys Gems taking the Sonya away from massive whiff. Yeah, um, Sonya's so... Sonya's really good map here. She gives great stride control. It's just that much more to spin on and get healing off of in team fights. So yep. it's great and pickup. the Merc control as well. Yep. What what I started to say with ETC, there's. I think he's probably the only hero where the statement is true. You can see professional HGC games go where the tank player will maybe use one mosh pit the whole game, and he gets value out of it and he wins the game. But even not using it, the threat of it being there is still makes it effective. Well, it changes team fights, right? Even if he's not using it, the threat of it being there can changes how your team wants to position. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Abs so... Um, that would be maybe the one ban I would consider, um, especially if you're you're targeting maybe some heroes that don't have the interrupts to deal with the mosh pit. Two picks mm -hmm. coming out of massive whiff here. Uh, now is the time. They are going to go with Malfurion and ETC, both solid pickups. They synergize so well together. I'm not going to give them the chance to ban it. They're just going to take it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Oh, we have a Cho'Gall, ladies and gentlemen. Now that is super early. And an insta lock too. I mean, they. Yeah. I think they would have had their chance at it, letting it go. But let's talk about that Chogal. In years past, it was Chogariel. That was the pick. Now you can go Chogariel, or you can go Anna. Both so good with her. So you can't ban out both. Only Anna, one. Anna changed a little bit. You have to take the grenade talent, I believe, at one now, and you have to stack that enough to get the full 100% healing on it now. Well, and not just that, but it's also the nano boost that affects both Cho and Gaul. That's that's 
True, too. Absolutely. So I imagine this band is going to go all the way down to the wire because um, I'm going to just go out on a limb, and I'm going to say Massive Whiff was not anticipating the Instalock Chogall. There's Absolutely. the Ariel band. There's the Ariel band. Now, if you are Guy's Gems, we're going to see Tychus Band, we're going to see Leoric Band, we're going to see uh, Nubarak Band for the Cocoon is really good in the Chogol. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, one of those, I imagine, is the – or Malthiel for the same reason as Leoric, yeah. I'm not I'm not as scared as the Malthiel, though, because his, his passive has been nerfed so much that the percentage damage that you're getting out of it is just not quite the same. I do understand his ulti is still very strong against him because you get him down to a certain health pool and he dies, but – you know, but the, and just to play devil's advocate, though, it could be a double ban, and that Malthiel is one of the few heroes who can stand toe to toe with Sonya in lane. So that's true. That's true. So it could be both a Chogall soft counter ban as well as a uh, solo lane uh, ban to help Sonya command that solo. So who do you take here? Do you take Leo and Tychus here? And take him now, or um, do you try I, and pick up something else? I like hard CC into Chogall. So I like uh, an Anub, and I like uh, a Tychus. The Anub, you can cocoon him, or you can just pin him down forever with ETC. Mm -hmm. Those are the picks that I like. Uh, hard CC into Chogall is underrated. There's the Tychus. And a Grayman. Oh, Grayman's another another pick, actually, yep. with his uh, Cursed Bullet. Cursed Bullet. Mm -hmm. Yep. So good 35. Is it 35% now, Chunk? I believe it is 35%, yes. Okay. So nice they go with the Morales shot, right? instead of – now I really like uh, Anubarak. And the reason is you Cocoon, Chogall, and you Hard Dive Morales. I love an Anubarak here for that reason. You Cocoon, mm -hmm. Chogall, you Dive Morales. That's, um, it's an excellent solution to the uh, Morales-Chogall combo there. And that is a massive amount of front line for that Morales to hide behind, though, too. Right. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. If they can get in there with, with ETC. And, you can also do uh, it with the Mayev, Grayman. too, by the way. If you want to do the Cocoon Mayev, you oh, can yeah. do that as well. Mm -hmm. A little bit harder to hit. It's not point mm -hmm. click. But, but you can't burn it down. You can't burn it down, and you can use it whenever you want. So if you right. see something happening, you can always pause it all out. So let's see what they go with for the last pick here. My gut tells me it's going to be a Leoric because that tends to be what people go on to. Mm -hmm. um, but I would really like to see the Maev or the Anubarak here, assuming they have a player that can play those heroes. They have plenty of damage, and if Tychus goes the bigger they are at level, what, four, um, you're going to get the chunk out there quick. Now that I did not see coming, not going with a second frontliner, going solo tank ETC and opting to pile on the damage uh, with a Hanzo. Well, if he goes auto attack, he's got a ton of frontliners to attack with his auto attack, so he should get that stack super quick. And then you take the armor reduction on all of them for your for your damage to help burst burst them down possibly. Mm -hmm. And then you can technically take a I think it's a one and a half percent burn on autos and scatter arrow at sixteen, I believe, with him as well. But that's a little bit later. Um, so. You know, something that I think uh, Massive Whiff really needs to be aware of here because they clearly have the advantage in damage. However, with basically all backliners other than the ETC, uh, Guy's Gems has a significant advantage in the number of hit points that they have to lose. I mean, there's so many hit points to burn through between Sonya, Muradin, and Shogal that that damage has to maximize. If they split those damage... Um, you know, they're going to have a hard time bringing down anybody. Yep, yep. Except for maybe Sonya early, but right. once you hit late game, if you get to late game. Really, what I want to see is I want to see uh, optimal rotations from uh, Massive Whiff here so they can get an XP lead and get those level leads because that's when you can start punishing the Chogal. If you let Chogal get ahead, that's when the problems are going to happen. 100% true. Yeah, that's, that's something that Chogal struggles with, especially on larger maps. Um, is dealing with a uh, wave pressure. So we have blue team, guys, gems, white ghost on Morales, switch on the Sonya, Cody Kraz on Muradin, and Spoogles on Gaul, and Odin on Cho to combine for Odigals, I'm going to say. I'm going to say <laughs> Odigals. <laughs> I like it. 
with. We've got K Shizzle on the gray main, Kaina on the Tychus, Ruben Ripper on the Mouth, Zane KT on the Hanzo, and Zanzibar on the ETC. Speaking of late game, if uh, Guy's Gems gets to 20 here, they're going to have reduced death timer on Cho'Gall, assuming they go that way. They're going to have. Um, assuming Muradin goes Avatar and Healing Static, they're going to have Avatar, Healing Static, Rewind at 20, and Sonya, who's basically indestructible uh, after 16. That is going to be a huge difficult team for Massive Whiff to try to take down post-20. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I'm excited to see how this all plays out. And this is one of those reasons why I mentioned I like casting lower division games sometimes more than the higher ones is uh, they're not nearly as much of a slave to the meta, and you can really see some uh, either creative or crazy things, depending on how you want to describe it, uh, yeah. but but always fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the one is backwards, Trabe, because I didn't realize that it was, and I haven't flip-flopped it yet. So first kill is Greymane grabbing the Sonya in the top lane, so first blood going to massive whiff. I'm going to commend guys gems on this rotation with um, heroes that aren't traditionally considered wave clear heroes, but they're really making it work with this Chogal yeah. Muradin. Yeah, they are. We got might have another game coming up here on top on this Morales. Oh, got a little too aggressive though. You're gonna scare her off. You make a backwards one trade when you're adjusting the size of the one text box in OBS. If you over drag it, it mirrors whatever you're doing. Um, and that's what I did when I put it in the box, and I didn't realize it until this game started. So, uh, backwards one for Massive Whiff. I am really fascinated to see how this game develops. Normally, I'd kind of want to go over the draft and see who won it. Um, I, th I think the Chogall comp won. I, I just wonder... If, I 100% agree. Yeah, I just I don't know if Massive Whiff is going to be able to deal with the sheer number of hit points coming at them. To be perfectly honest. Yeah, I I agree. I'm I don't I don't see how they deal with it right now with that with the, the Muradin and the Sonya and the Chokal with the with the medic just literally sitting back there and healing them the entire time because they have no way to get to the medic. <laughs> well, and furthermore, Morales only needs to worry about healing Chokal. Muradin. And Sonya later game can take care of themselves. Although Muradin yeah. here is caught out. Power slid face melt by the ETC. White Ghost took a very dangerous rotation and barely, barely gets away. Yeah, if I'm if I'm uh, massive whiff here, I'm definitely getting on this shrine as fast as I can. And for how evenly matched the macro and the Mercs was game one. Game two, Guy's Gems prioritizing that top Merc, and they are getting Merc pressure top for free while also winning this objective. Hanzo in trouble, and this is Muradin. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, Muradin running, Tychus running. Oh. oh, that's a great jump. That's a great jump. And Tychus got away with 12 hit points on the backside, oh. but Morales does fall. What was Morales doing over there? I didn't see that. I am not sure. This. Here. These team fights are really going to be all over the place. What I started to say before that all went down is this Muradin is going to be allowed to play differently than Muradin traditionally is. If he builds with healing static, he has no backline to protect almost. He can literally no. just dive down there and start wailing on people while he heals up. Does he go haymaker to try and kick somebody into his team? I wouldn't. Um, I would do it just because the amount of havoc that he can cause Diving on the back line, popping healing static, and kind of turning into this unkillable comp that Guy's Gems has going on. I think that just is a creates a bigger advantage for them. Yeah, we've got split push top. Oh no, never mind. That's Tychus. I looked at the wrong team. That's my fault. We do have Merc camp from Sonya coming in though. Yeah, so Sonya doing her job. She's clearly on Merc duty. Tychus had to rotate up to clear top lane, and only the front wall coming out of. Yep, front wall coming out. Uh, with the first John Cena, and that's about what you expect. Early game you finishers, know, not terribly powerful. I don't powerful. really agree with that call. I think Sonya needs to go and actually soak that XP, because pretty much Tychus just negated that front wall XP that they got with the push that he got up top while she was getting the Merc camp. I think she needed to either go top or stay mid and get that soak so that they could keep that XP lead that they had. Now it's pretty much even. 
So finally, some Merc Camps uh, for Massive Whiff. Uh, despite as poorly as that went, with free wave pressure on the top. Got an invade coming. Invade from Muradin and Cho'Gal. Morale is coming down. This is going to be numbers for Guy's Gem. And Odegol's on Cho'Gal being aggressive. The face melt to get out. Um, however, Guy's Gem secures it anyway. And Tychus taken out by Gaul. There's just nothing they can do. They're not They're not focusing on the medic that's sitting right next to the Cho'Gal. They're just kind of running around and hitting the Cho'Gal. Well, I mean, the thing get is... the damage on there. Yeah, the thing that's going to happen is... ETC is probably going to be more concerned with not dying than he is going to be with setting up these team fights, um, and understandably so, because he's going to be under a ton, a ton of pressure. Yeah. Um, that the backline is really almost not going to have a choice as to who they attack, because their positioning is going to be dependent on where they can safely do damage from. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's going to be interesting to see how well uh, the Malfair can hit his Ws to keep his team alive as well. Kind of yeah. what we talked about last game. The big, the the, the roots, the lawns, that uh, Ruben Ripper is going to have to put out. A lot of those are going to be are going to have to be of the peel variety, the life saving mm -hmm. variety. Sonya chunked out Greymane up top, so Sonya's getting some free push top. Oh, she's going to come down mid though. Let's see if we can get a gank. No, she's going to she's posturing for the invade and then just decides to free push top and get ten. I think that's a good call, actually. Get that ten early. Try now, I will I will say, despite what looks like a game that Guys Gems is bullying, Massive Whiff actually has a two kill advantage. Massive Whiff, not too far behind in levels. The structural disadvantage is that all their forts front walls are gone, um, and some of these forts have taken some fair amount of damage. But they are going yeah. to hit ten in time to contest this objective. They are, absolutely. We'll see if the heroics that they pick will help with uh, some of the poke. But here's Cho'Gal just doing work on this Hanzo. So we have they haven't really touched him. Twilight Hammer out of Cho, Medivac out of uh, Morales, and that disappoints me. I'll tell you why in a moment. Shadow Boat Volley out of Gaul, Playmaker out of Muradin does there take out is. the Greymane, and Wrath of the Berserker on Sonya. I will tell you why I wanted Stim Drone is I wanted a Stim Drone, give him the axe, Muradin, just for funsies. Yep. yep, and, well, I mean, you think about the sheer amount of damage and havoc he can cause yep. in the back line, especially with the playmaker damage or, you know, popping somebody away or whatever. He's just going to be a menace back there. So Sonya is not on the objective. She's actually getting camps while uh, Greymane was spawning. Um, I kind of like that decision, actually, just... They use their numbers advantage to get the camps rather than the objectives. Oh, well, and they're winning the winning the shrine anyway, so you right. know, why not? So we have Twi again. Go ahead. Twilight Dream out of Malfurion, Cursed Bullet out of Greymane, uh, Laser Drill out of Tychus, um, which uh, makes sense. Normally you see the um, Commandeer Odin, and maybe you do that for more durability. But when the you can when the Laser Drill is down, he can still use his percentage based damage on the big yeah. targets. Oh, there's kill on Hanzo. Big poke Great damage bomb. coming out of Gaul there, yeah. yeah. And Mosh Pit, a ETC, <laughs> Dragon Arrow on the Hanzo. I mean, you can see it in these team fights. Uh, Massive Whiff is scared to step into them. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and, and as they should be. Yeah, yeah, 100%. They, they don't have the volume damage or the burst damage to be able to kill anybody. There's just so much health that they've got to deal with. And they're getting another free Merc camp, there's, and there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, I mean, just uh, Cho'Gal's weakness is map pressure, but there is no problems there. Sonya is just permanently not with their team, as she is, like, single-handedly taking control of his map because Guy's Gems doesn't seem to need her. No. And she's getting great. She's getting that soak and, and uh, Merc pressure and XP that they need to keep that level lead up because they're just missing soak elsewhere with the body, uh, less bodies. So the level lead is slowly growing for Guy's Gems as John Cena finally falls. There's going to be a big oh, three-man three mosh pit, though. Muradin is going to go down. They need to focus on Morales next, not Cho'Gal. There they go onto the Morales. She is split away from Cho'Gal, and she is in trouble. A great counter-engage. She is oh. Cho'Gal <laughs> is not. They trade Tychus for Cho'Gal. So that was one hell of a re-engage by the Zanzibar. Guy's Gems Medic. getting just a little bit too confident there. Medic got the kill off on the uh, Tychus on the backside with the grenade. Well, those grenades, they can be lethal. Right? 
Watch out for those suckers. So that may have been the moment that Guy's Gems, I'm sorry, Massive Whiff needed. They're already resuming, uh, clearing out these lanes, doing some damage control. Greymane and Hanzo, uh, Greymane started it, uh, took a little too much damage, so Hanzo's going to come in and finish it off. However, can, can be brutal. Yeah, Guy's Gems it's in the neighborhood. Murden's going to steal this if he's... Whoa! Oh, he's so good of... He was very close if they would have poked their head in on this. Yeah, yeah. Tychus he needs to be very careful about stepping in this. Away. Yeah, I mean, I think Hanzo would have gotten away, but he couldn't have contested Muradin if no, Muradin no chose way. to came in. Yeah. With ETC and Malfurion showing on the map bottom, guys, gems, this is a free four for them. Yeah, and I don't know if you need to be up this far to contest it. I, you're just asking to get killed. You're going against their entire team. You shouldn't even be here. Well, that's well I mean... Damage. Yeah, they're doing it, partially because Guy's Gem is tanking the fort there, the and it's fort. the fort that's, that's going to be the difference. ETC split pushing bottom the whole time. So Interesting call to keep him down there without a global, but it seems to be working so far. They got the pick. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they feel like they have to, I think, pressure the map. That worked out okay for Massive Whiff, but I think it worked out okay mostly because uh, guys gem tank the fort when they really didn't need to they could have just stepped yeah. back and waited for the for the fort So it wasn't a five on four in their favor. It was a five on five. The fort was the number five <laughs> Yeah, that, that makes sense See if we can get some waypoint here save the key now ETC on the flank Wasn't able to isolate out the Morales, but he is here and he is waiting to do something Twilight dream root There's the mosh pit there on the bird and he could be in trouble and he is Excellent isolation there by Massive yeah. Whiff. That was really good. I feel like uh, Guy's Gems is just kind of over pushing and overstaying their welcome too much here, and it's kind of costing them several of these just picks, allowing them to lose their map pressure that they had earlier. Yeah, I think the early game was so successful for them, they, they may be falling a victim to overconfidence here a little bit, so. Isolating out the Cho'Gall despite the Morales heals, taking a ton of heals. Zanzibar really stepping into that. Again, that armor shred that Hanzo's getting is really paying dividends now as well. Now, Muradin just spawning. He will be in here in time. A big three-man power slide. Oh, Morales is in trouble. Heck. Down she goes. Zanzibar, I'm not going to lie, he has hard carried this whole team fight right here. Yeah, he's playing a fantastic ETC. He's a couple really good ults just controlling that front line so well. There's another great slide. However, Sonya and Muradin do pick up Tychus on the backside. <coughs> However, Sonya just stays Long too long down. again. Is this going to be the first John Cena pickup for a Massive Whiff? It certainly looks like it. I think it should, 100%. You're going to get some poke in here from the Cho'Gall, but it's not going to be enough to take it. I think the important thing here is just to retreat and recover your lanes because you've got Mercs pushing mid and just let them have it at this point. I, I don't know if fighting this. Oh, yeah, but the only damage. one more to go. They do get the Hanzo. ETC is going to secure it on the backside. They only needed one left. That's okay. Getting that pick is huge. It's going to buy them so much pressure off this push from this. From the, and like, Greymane from goes down to Odegals too. So. Despite losing the objective, they have not lost their aggression, oh, medic, and that's going to kill Morales. That's something you never want to see. You, you know, remember when we first started playing, Matt, I was mm -hmm. harping on that so big with our team because we were just so bad at it. Do not Sorry. let John Cena stun two of us. He only needs to stun one. Yeah, stun two plus the arcane is always the most damage. And John Cena do. almost got Odogles on the Cho'Gall. That oh. was really close. That was. So this game, what started to look like all oh, guys' gems, Murden needs to not overlook those lasers. They do a lot of damage. Yeah, absolutely. It looked. That you're getting from the Punisher. Yeah, man, it looked like it was gonna be all guys' gems, but it has turned to exactly what the draft was: wild and crazy. Yeah, absolutely. You are getting the picks that they need. The the fights are sustaining in the way that uh, Malfurion would like them to. ETC is just controlling the front line so incredibly well. Way better than I thought he would be able to, to be frank. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also partly due to guys' gems kind of overconfidence in a lot of these fights as well. The and Morales is getting out of position because I, she can't get to the, the people she needs to heal. Yeah, and I think we're going to see that change as now that this game has shifted a little bit, and mm -hmm. I think momentum probably slightly on massive whiff side right there, so I think you're going to see 
uh, guys' gems tighten up just a little bit here. Well, the thing that was working for him earlier, too, was just sitting at the shrine and just poking and poking and poking, right? Instead of diving in all crazy. So I think if they get back to that, I think the fights will, will work better in their favor. Yeah, because uh, ETC cannot hold up to that poke. There's just no way. No, no. And, and as long as you're poking the backline, too, if you're hitting Malfurion, he can't step up to get Ws and heal people up quickly. ETC is kind of hovering around here. He's just keeping an eye on everybody. They're going to try to take... I love this call. They're going to try to get the keep here with Morales and Chogall and Muradin. I think that's a fantastic call. They caught him sitting top too Although long. Although they might overstay again because everybody is here. The Dragon Arrow misses the Chogall, but it hits the um, Morales. Morales. Yeah. Sonya coming a little bit late. Shadow Bolt Volley going out. The, the Medivac disengage. They need to get out of dodge, and they oh, do. Just Bird far enough. Oh, it's a great stun by Murden. Follow up chain. That was a ridiculous disengaging medevac from White Ghost um, and a nice retreating stun from Muradin to set up the counter kill from Sonya. Uh, Greymane just, I don't, you know, I, I don't think he stepped out at all. It's just, that was just a great play by the side of Guy's Gems. No, that was absolutely, it's fantastic kiting backwards, right? Just buying time, buying time till one of them steps out a little bit. And then they were able to land a, st a couple stuns from the Muradin, and then the chain follow-up, able to kill somebody. Oh, but Muradin. And once again, you know, that's the second time we've seen Guy's Gems this time tanking the structures w when it was just not really necessary. Morale yeah, is running no. out of energy, energy here, too. And they've got push bottom that they need to deal with. That's not going to get cleared anytime soon. That's, there's only one turret there that's going to get killed pretty quick. Yeah, and this this is a full push, so that they will need to address that at some point. This is a three on four. Zanzibar, man, is he aggressive. He uses the double W. He took the uh, talented W where he gets two knockbacks to ensure that he just snaked that away from them. He ran in there like his whole team was behind him. Uh, body language is underrated. Maybe guys' gems Clear thought they off. were. Yeah, there's Sonya clearing out bottom lane now. You know, sometimes when you play with those vision, with, with the vision, if you act like your whole team is behind you, um, you know, the other team has to respect that if they don't know where everybody is. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. You know, we had a, had a game just this week at where we did the same thing. We got seen in vision and acted like we went south and ended up, you know, they, doubling back and heading Look at Massive Whiff. They're anticipating going for the keep. Odegol's isolated out. Four members here for three. Cursed Bullet does miss, I believe. It's such a short cooldown. Look now. at That's where Morales is, though. If they burn oh, this down. Oh, the Twilight Dream just oh, a half a oh, second late. Oh, they got it. They got it. And White Ghost is dead. in trouble. There's the yep. Mosh Pit isolating only Muradin. Um, Twilight. The Silence coming out from Chogol, though. The 16 Silence talent. This is all over They're the place. Split, though. Although this whole time, Larson, Tychus securing the objective for Massive Whiff. That's really good for them. Although it's a pretty slow clear for him. They're going to get the keep for it. Finally, they get this keep that they've been dying to go after. Sonya's in trouble, though. Yep, there's the power slide. Greymane goes down to the Chogol, who is now tanking top keep once yeah. again. I'm not really sure why they keep diving these forts the way that they do. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not likely to turn out how they want it. But they just keep staying and keep battling. Their sustain yeah. is so good at, in the late game that they can just hang around. I don't know if I agree with it, but Tyke is here joining now after getting the Punisher. So John Cena was picked up, and he is free sieging in the top lane right now. Zanzibar, he is not letting up. Murden is going to go down, except for the Haymaker oh. pushes ETC out. Tychus on the flank gets it, hey. and now Chogol in trouble. Zanzibar is just waiting for this Unstoppable to end. Times it not quite right. Oh, that's a great ulti, Shadow Bolt volley. Yeah, Zanzibar was just a hair early on the power slide. Would have ended up with a Chogol oh. kills. Sonya oh, down on the way. Sonya down on the backside. Tychus gets away. This is a good time to check on the level 20 talents because did Chogol take the cooldown reduction on his death timer? He did not. He took. Uh, oh no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Where is it? Nope. nope Shadow Bolt volley armor. hits all and armor. Interesting. I think that's a bad call because anytime you go down, you just can't ever end the game. You're up, Chogol's up so quickly that 
you can't rotate quick enough and he's well, just back up again. What it allows you to do also is you can just trade Cho'Gall two for two. If, if there's a chance to do it, you do it. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's always going to be up faster than the other team. This game has been absolutely bananas. Yeah, 100% agree. I think it comes down to great ETC play and great counter gauges back and forth, back and forth. You know, one team kiting back, one pushing forward, the other one kiting back. Yeah, the team fights have been absolutely back and forth. Each, Both teams have had their moments. Both teams have had places in this game where they uh, felt like uh, they had the momentum only to have it snatched away from them. Uh, both teams about the same level. Structures are pretty close. Uh, only one keep down for Massive Whiff. And they're looking to negate that by pushing this mid lane out. Got some Mercs on push. They've got to deal with push top and bottom here for guys' gems. So I think you just give up the clear those lanes. Yeah, that's not a bad call at all. Especially with Shrine uh, being bottom in the next one as well. I think you got to get these cleared. And you got pressure on keep now. I think they stayed a little bit too long just to save that fort. I think that was silly. So Massive Whiff sending Greymane to deal with the top push top. Uh, while also grabbing this camp. And ETC doing a little solo sieging. However, he does not stick around and tank that fort. Got so Medic trying to clear the, the Mercs. Not really going real well. But then everybody comes to join. So I like this call. They cleared top, got the mercs, and now they're resuming their siege on the mid fort, but this time with the mercenaries. Yeah, and I think that's a great call by uh, Massive Whiff here to get those mercs and then to p come in and punish, uh, push and, and get them uh, on the rotations as, they, as uh, Guys Gems has to clear top and bottom. So we're going to have a little bit of a lull as this objectives will pop soon. Both sides, I think, probably just going to do a little bit of lane maintenance. And yeah, I agree, and they've got to deal with, uh, Massive Whiff's got to deal with uh, Catapults pushing mid, too, so they'll have to rotate there after this push and just kind of clear that up and push it out. Yeah, that's. I was going to say the same thing. That's really the only thing that I want to see happen is I want to see Massive Whiff clear this mid lane as far back as they can so it's not an issue in the uh, objective phase. Both teams posturing have, here, though. They have great push top, too, that... Could cause trouble for guys' gens. That was a yep. really nice zoning lawn by Malfurion there, because Tychus did eat a Q. Playmaker out, not really getting a whole lot done. Nope, just putting ETCs back against the wall there. Mm -hmm. So I want to see them clear out these uh, catapults, and then we're going to have the fight that could decide the game here very easily right now. Bush party coming out for guys' gems. Um, they have to smell this uh, massive whiff. They do. A lot of damage ETC onto ETC. That, yeah, that was what I was saying. He cannot hold on to that. Um, Cursed Bullet goes on to Muradin, but he's already basically healed up. He did good, though, about not wasting his slide there to check it, so he was able to, to save that if he needed it at the last minute to get away. And here we go. You know what we didn't check? What did ETC do at 20? That's a huge one, too. He went uh, Bolt Link. of the Storm. Yeah, took the, took the Bolt of the Storm. Laser There's Drill is down. Morales still has plenty of energy. Playmaker on the oh. top side. Two-man mosh pit isolates out the Sonya. Sonya goes. She will go down. Sonya's not getting out of this. No. But she Sonya down. Game. Chogol down. I, and, you know, if they would have taken this level 20 talent, they'd be up in time to defend this keep. But they're not. I don't know if they're going to be up in time. Yeah. I, I, this is a borderline, honestly, core call right now. You'd have to go sidewall through the keep. I think you probably have enough time to do it, but this is definitely the safer, more conservative call here. Yeah, I um, think without having great access to one of these keeps, I think it's probably safer to get the Punisher. Definitely safer. However, three Katas on Massive Whiff's core, they either need to core themselves or go back. That is a backdoor attempt by Muradin and Morales. They are joining with the Katas. That's a great call. It's ballsy. Let's see if it works. I mean... They're already hearthing back, I assume, and they are. Oh, this is going to be pretty close. They need to get the Katas. They need to not worry about Morales. They need to get the Katas. Nice job by Tychus to go on there. 39%, 34%, 32. Are they get it? Murden is low. He gets exploded by Cursed Bullet. That was an ambitious attempt. But I, I think they bought time, which I think is important. They bought time that they needed so they can't push the core. Well, not only they bought time, they bought 70% of the core there, over 70%. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Shadowball Volley coming out and get damage on the Immortal. Now, if if Massive Whiff doesn't end here, and I would have liked to see just all five men run down to this core here, um, if they don't end here, there is the permanent threat of Medivac to the core back door. So yeah, by not winning there, th they're, they really have their backs against the wall. I, I think and a five-man core rush there was, was the call on the side of Massive Whiff just I for agree. that reason. You cannot let Morales take control of this game. As soon as all five are up, they can literally go core anytime they want. Oh, no, they'll finish it easy because of the amount of health that they have. They can't burn down quick enough to deal the, the damage, to deal with the damage. I mean, look, they had time to walk over here, grab two camps, and push top, and all of their members are still not up. So this was all time they could have been on core, which yep. is at 87%. Yeah, and that's just, I think that's just uh, not understanding, you know, your win condition in the late game. You know, now, you if they push this scared. in, that could do it too, because as long as they're pushing in on uh, Guys' Gems' core here, they cannot, obviously, uh, medevac exactly. from here. But they need yeah. to end here. They do. They need, they need, what they need to do is they need to clear the wave as fast as they can for Guys' Gems and push them back and then probably go. Now, they got Katas coming in bottom, so they can play a little bit of a patient game, but they have to win this here. Shadow Bolt Volley coming out, later coming out, Twilight Hammer going out, Greymane in trouble. One man oh, Mosh Pit gets Morales on the backside. That might be enough with Morales down. This is all over the oh, place. Tychus. Murad in the first to fall, and there goes Sonya. Yeah, now that key, will be so game. Zanzibar moshing only Morales, I think, won them that team fight. Yep, 100%. They're going to go and try and rush it. Oh, not going to matter. That was an absolutely crazy game, a crazy set, and congratulations to second place Massive Whiff getting the domination. 2-0 victory over first place, guys, Gems. To my knowledge, that is the first domination guys, Gems has suffered this season. You know, it came from late game team fights too, where they just <laughs> were really on the same page. And, and, and this game and the and the la uh, first game where they're really on the same page, and uh, with you know target calling, mosh pits on the right people, and they were able to turn those fights really, really well. I'm going to see if we have we have uh, 15 minutes before my game two, which I don't think you're going to hang out for, so I'll solo cast that one. But mm -hmm. I'm going to see if we can get uh, one of those guys in here because there's some definitely some stuff to talk about. Sure, absolutely. Let me find him in here. Um, and I got to give MVP to ETC that game. Uh, oh, both games. Both games. He had massive ults both games that really enabled his team uh, to – and and he just controlled the front line so incredibly well that game. I was extremely impressed with how well he played. You know, we, we talked about in the draft, you said target ban, and I said, well, <coughs> ATC had some nice moshes game one, but they just weren't in range. He needs to make the adjustment. He 100% made the adjustment. You know what oh, I yeah. think the most impressive thing out of Zanzibar is on the stat screen. 109,000 damage tanks and a big, fat zero under the death column. That's impressive. That's very impressive. And and shows you how good Malfurion can be with healing those frontline tanks with just, you know, rolling your dots and hitting your Ws. And fantastic teamwork between those two. Okay, Matt, we're going to have to jump into an NGS Discord voice lobby uh, to meet one of those guys in there. Okay, I think I'm just going to – I'll just take off. I'll let you – You going to bounce, buddy? Well, yeah, thanks for bounce. joining me, man. That was tons of fun. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it again for sure. All right, man. We'll catch you later. All right. Later, bro. Hello? Hello. How are you doing, Ruben Ripper? Oh, I am pretty amped. <laughs> or do you? I, yeah, I bet you are. Do you prefer David Schwimmer or Ruben River? <laughs> uh, Ruben River's fine. David David Schwimmer's uh, Ross from Friends. Oh, I know exactly who it is. Oh, I, yeah. I commented that you guys got points for the mount synergy, but you lost yeah. the points because you didn't stick with the David Schwimmer moniker during the game. <laughs> okay. Well, next next time. <laughs> so. First place team, you guys sitting in second place. I'm sure both of you guys knew that going in. What was the chat like? How are you guys feeling after a big 2-0 win? Um, we, we feel really good. Um, we, 
we said so this this week, um, as I said, we have a very different team than we had last week. Um, um, and so we were trying to focus a new mentality for where we were going and also kind of keeping an eye on, uh, did our research on guys' gems, didn't think they would still take the show goal, and they did, and it was uh, very frustrating. Yeah. But uh, it, was, it was a very good game, good series. So did you guys have some mid-season roster turnover, basically? Uh, yeah, we want one of our players. He, he might be back uh, if we make the playoffs. Um, but one of our, our kind of core guys uh, is, is going to be gone for a couple weeks. That's that's a rough thing to do mid-season, and you guys that yeah. makes the win all the more impressive. So who's the new guy? Uh, new guy uh, played the Sonya first game and second game played the Tychus. All right. Um, we played with him for a long time. He's been on the team all season, but um, he was an alternate and um, uh, really solid player. Um, glad glad to have him. So I made the comment in that game too. I was surprised that you guys opted for a triple backline assassin with that last pick, Hanzo, instead of a second frontliner. What was the thought process behind that? Because clearly you made it work. Um, yeah. So we again we'd seen um, some of their drafts, and we knew they were going to pick three tanks and kind of go for the the zone and survive, and then let Chogall do all the damage. And we thought, you know, by picking into the kind of traditional, you know, tank bruiser whatever. And into their non-traditional comp, we're, we're playing into their hand, we thought. So we said, you know what, instead of trying to, to do what we're supposed to do, let's just fight fire with fire and go for a lot of damage. Uh, well, great great call. I, I doubted it, but clearly, what do <laughs> I know? Um, so I am, I'm, a, I'm the tank player on my team, and ETC is far and away my highest level hero. And I was so thoroughly impressed with Zanzibar on game two as a solo tank into a Cho'Gall, it is really hard to both stay alive and set your team up. Um, he did such a great job. Why don't, can you comment on what that was like playing behind him that game? Because he was so good. Yeah, that was uh, some, you know, we talked about as soon as the, the draft lobby was done, and you said, hey, you know, it's, it's three and a half tanks to one, and we were real squishy in the back, so we need you know, really good peel, and we relied on him. You know, he was kind of the linchpin for that because if he couldn't, you know, keep the peel and keep us alive, we wouldn't have been able to do it. And he was not only did he get the good peel, he hit some some crucial mosh pits uh, towards the late game there that uh, were ended up turning turning the game around for us. Yeah, you know, it's that last team fight. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys you guys are like me, players too. You're gonna go and watch the vod and relive it and have a blast. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna see my commentary yeah. on that last team fight. Etc. Basically. Power slides past their entire team and solo moshes Morales. And it is very unusual where you're going to hear somebody say, well, ETC just ignored somebody, got a one-man mosh on the backside, and that probably won them the team fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we, It's funny because we, we have different casters every week, and um, everybody gets a different inflated ego each week because the casters seem to like someone different. Week, so. <laughs> He hasn't he hasn't got his week yet, and so it is his week in the sun. I'll make sure he gets all the. Uh, yeah, you know, it, especially because I, I not that I picked on him a little bit game one, but game one he wasn't nearly as good, still solid, but man, he made those mosh pit adjustments into game two, and it was a world of difference. He was just that good. Yeah. Any uh, closing thoughts before I go on to my next game here? Uh, no, uh, just. Uh... Well, I'm going to give our shout out this week to uh, to Joe. He's our other alternate who uh, isn't playing. He just moved. His computer's not set up yet. Um, so might have him in the next couple of weeks and um, look forward to playing with him. And, you know, good shout out to Guys Gems. Uh, those are great games. We had to you know fight back the entire time and uh, look forward to seeing them in the in the playoffs. All right. Well, congratulations again. Big win for you guys. That was a really fun set to cast all around. Thanks for joining me, man. Have a good night. Yeah, thank you. You too. So we are going to take a quick about 10 minute break. We're right up against it. That'll give me a time to, <coughs> excuse me, set up the overlays, uh, grab a quick uh, glass of water, and then we will roll quickly into our next matchup, which will be Division A, the real ultimate mosh pit versus Drop Dead Gorgeous. Hang out for about 10 minutes and we'll be right back. 